Well, g'day there, everybody, right around the world. You are here with James on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. This is going to be a Thursday afternoon market recap. We have about an hour's worth of trading left until we are left with the end of day uh, candlestick. However, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing down or, or very close to at the moment down 140 points, it is very important for me to give you a constructive outlook of what to expect as we move into the month of July 2017. Obviously, when we see these relatively large, so to speak, down days in the market, people become a little bit concerned as to what is happening with price action. Most recently, anyway, and in, in, in really in the, the, the most sort of reliable sort of, uh, you know, memory, short term memory we have with the market it has been a relatively trouble free market. I mean, this market seems to be drifting higher, and that has been absolutely fantastic. However, we're starting to see these candlesticks begin to shift. And when they shift, uh, you need to shift along with the market and your expectations as to what price action is going to do. So, uh, long story short, so to speak, I'll be recapping the industrial average, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ um, as we move into July and really what to look out for moving forward. This is going to be the final sort of uh, YouTube post for the week. I won't be uh, releasing one tomorrow as at Friday. Instead, I'll be focusing my energy and my thoughts towards the analysis class, which I'll record in that pro analysis class for Saturday. Now, that will be recorded and posted up on the website. So this is going to be it. You won't hear from me essentially until next week. Uh, but anyway... Let's move on to uh, the industrial average at the moment. Again, closing or very close to closing down uh, 140 points. This candlestick is what we call an outside day Morobozu candlestick. So you can see that uh, to begin the session on Thursday, we gapped up. However, we weren't able to push up above uh, or really continue above Wednesday's candlestick, nor were we able to get above the week which we established on Monday, let alone this gap candlestick over here. So I mean, we're obviously building resistance. This looks as though this is going to be a molecular or minor level swing high for the markets. And this candlestick here is, is, is so to speak, um, you know, the strongest of a two day reversal candlestick pattern that we have in the world of technical analysis and of course candlestick charting. So this is relatively bearish for the markets on the short term moving forward. On top of that, if we have a look at these oscillators, you can see that they are naturally resetting as well. The RSI is adjusting, it's just fallen below that uh, neutral level at 50. Uh, but most importantly and tellingly at the moment, the MACD on my screen over here, you can see that it has definitively crossed bearish and that the histograms are starting to separate and if not even accelerate uh, or decline anyway, accelerate towards the, uh, the negative side as well. So this is all of the types of signals that we would expect once we see a trend, sort of short term plateau and then move into a correctional type of phase. And the correctional type of phase is really what I want to speak to you about in this particular video. We're not calling for you know, a major market reversal uh, at this particular moment, nor an intermediate correction. If anything, this is going to be generally that one, two, three breakout uh, that we see once a market overcomes historical uh, areas of resistance. If you pay attention to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we were asking ourselves in the early sort of, uh, at least in the infancy of in June, whether or not this back test was essentially the one, two, three breakout. And it looks as though if we go out another fractal, what we're really doing right now is establishing truly that one, two, three breakout retest. So again, just to illustrate this for you, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever based off the candlesticks. And again, just naturally those oscillators resetting, moving back down into that type of correctional type of phase that the markets themselves, the indices very sort of healthily, uh, and again, this is constructive price action to come down to about 21,100 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It may sort of uh, flatten out at about 21.2, but generally in this vicinity, you can see this green box over here. This is essentially a sort of a blanket or a safety net on the market itself. As long as we remain above this green box, this is still going to be a potential buying opportunity or at least to position yourself for the continuation of the most recent bullish breakout. Now, if we fast forward into the S&P 500, uh, as at the current juncture, again, we have about an hour's worth of trading left on Thursday. We are closing down very close to 20 points. But most importantly is that we recognize the simple fact that this is, again, a continuation off from another long day Morobozu candlestick, an engulfing type of candle. We had a long downward day on, on, on Tuesday. We had a very quick bounce off Wednesday's trading session. However, all of those gains, which we sort of you know, established on Wednesday have been given back plus more on Thursday. If anything, we're coming back down to retest a lot of these lower wicks, which in the past have acted as temporary support levels. So what we can say essentially right now is that the S&P, I mean, at best is moving sideways. But if we definitively crack below this level, this is coming in just above 2,415, give or take a couple of points. If we get a push more or less below the, con uh, the low of, of, of today's session, this may actually occur on Friday makes a lot of sense that just like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500 is going to come down to about 20, 000, sorry, 2,400. Let me just get those numbers correct. So I mean, again, we're not talking about a major intermediate or uh, 
you know, major level trend reversal. If anything, this is just that one, two, three back test that we never really saw towards the end of May uh, and then continuing into the early uh, period of June 2017. We have an exhaustion gap, which is, uh, you know, showing up at a relatively interesting location. This uh, is something that you should be paying attention to. However, in the past, when we have had these exhaustion gaps or what appear to be exhaustion gaps, they have filled, but the markets themselves have such or have since rallied off from those gap uh, support levels. So again, I don't think this is anything new or outside of the box of technical analysis really at all. You can see also with these rising 200 or the 100 and the 200 simple moving average, it is going to sort of almost uh, what I like to say anyway is X marks the spot. So I mean, when we get varying levels of support, and I mean, this is with the rising 100 simple moving average, if I bring this up with the 50 exponential moving average coming up a little bit higher, when we start to see uh, all of these levels come together more or less in one very close uh, type of vicinity on the chart itself. It does act as, I guess, uh, extra strength in terms of support. And you can see that on the S&P 500. If I show you this on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see that rising 50-day exponential coming in at about 21,107 as well. So, I mean, it's coming right in where our green box, uh, I guess that blanket support level is as well. And if I bring up those long-term simple moving averages, you can see the rising 100 simple moving average. I need to zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, just to bring this into sort of perspective for you, but you can see it is relatively close, so to speak, um, uh, to, to that green box as well. So, I mean, it makes sense. It is very logical to assume that this market is going to uh, pull back. But the only thing really supporting the markets right now, at least on the industrial average, is that rising 20. You can see intraday on Thursday, we are starting to see a little bit of buying pressure off it. Uh, but having said that, generally once we get these types of candlesticks and we move into that sort of reset phase, along with those oscillators, generally what will happen is that we will break that 20. It may not happen on Friday. We may, we may sort of bounce around this location. But generally speaking, uh, we will break the 20 and come back down at least uh, to, to more so of a correctional type of retest of that rising 50-day exponential moving average. Just to show you that again on the S&P 500, we've actually uh, closed or it looks as though we are going to close below it during Thursday's trading session. Now, Moving into the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ has been a market of interest for us. I've spoken about it a little bit throughout the week. We do have an open window. We tried to rally back up into resistance. We didn't get there. This has produced a secondary lower high, which is relatively interesting. We closed the gap uh, on Tuesday. However, on Wednesday, we saw again buyers jump back in right around that gap support. But all of those gains which the market established on Wednesday have been given back during Thursday's trading session as at the current juncture. We are down uh, just over 94 points on the NASDAQ. In fact, we're pushing back down below what was once that open window that has since been closed. So in terms of where is the next support for the NASDAQ, this is where the NASDAQ is sort of differential from that of the industrial average and also the S&P 500 is that we're really just setting up a channel. And again, channels, uh, although they can be, again, very profitable to trade, generally you want to position yourself obviously short at resistance and long at support, we can get these sort of flaky moves halfway in between the channel. And this is essentially what I call no man's land. So you don't really wanna be acting or at least looking to open up, uh, say, Q's exposure, if you wanna trade the Q's and looking at calls and puts in the middle of the channel. Instead, you'd rather wait until price action comes either down to support and looking for the bounce or the subsequent breakdown out of the channel or to play the breakout of the channel or, or either the rollover, all right? So we need to look at this very neutrally once we get back down to support, if in, if in fact, pardon me, we can get there. Now, again, just to continue this discussion, you can see that rising 100 super moving average is coming in very nicely with that lower support area. If I can just illustrate this for you, I'll change my color of my pen drawing tool to blue. It looks as though we are setting up something like this. And then again, a potential buying opportunity very early on in the month of July, 2017. So please pay attention to that. We're resting right on that 50 exponential moving average. But again, just like the 20, as I just previously discussed, if we cannot bounce off from this sustainably, we will come back down to that rising 100 simple moving average and also uh, macro support, which is coming in just above 6,000 on the NASDAQ as well. Um, I'm just thinking about some individual companies that maybe I could touch on also. Baidu has been a company that we've been short at from about $180.84 a share. What is really promising about this uh, stock is that although Again, we are slightly profitable. It's not the most profitable of trades at the moment. 
really what we're doing is again we're just establishing those upper weeks so this is extremely bearish we've got two uh shooting stars we've got one particular shooting star here we've just got a second uh shooting star under construction as at thursday and this is mixed with relatively bearish candlesticks in between and also outside of those two potential shooting stars at this back test of what was the breakdown uh, outside of this range over here so Biden was looking like it is going to ultimately come down to 172 i was speaking about this earlier in the week it hasn't obviously got there yet but it wouldn't surprise me to see a big long day uh, on Friday, if not uh, very early in the month of July, to hit our 172.32 target on Baidu and then to see a natural bounce and, uh, you know, a larger sort of channel consolidation, which is what we've been speaking about between 190 and 172. But I'll speak more about that over the weekend. Outside of that, and I mean, I don't want this to be a Hail Mary whatsoever, but I just want to give you a constructive sort of outlook on the US dollar. The US dollar has cracked 95.88 and it looks exceptionally, exceptionally bearish. I mean, on, on when was it? It was on Tuesday, we were trading up just shy of 97.50. Here we are at 95.70. So, I mean, we've sold off quite considerably for the US dollar. And the reason for me addressing the US dollar right now is because the more I look at this chart, the more this type of picture, um, you know, comes to mind, essentially. This is what we look, I mean, this is what the US dollar looks like right now. And I've spoken about this in the past as to when, uh, say for instance, a market or even an individual stock, let alone an ETF or Forex, if you're talking currency anyway, the US dollar index, generally when we are overstretched, and what I mean by overstretched is that we move into sort of these, these extreme oversold conditions, especially on something such as uh, favorable or widely pronounced as the US dollar. The story itself can change very, very quickly. And to use, uh, I guess, a similar parallel to the story changing very simply, uh, and again, just to make or conduce this down to something very simple, and, and what I mean by the story changing very simply is that one candle that can change everything, is that if we go back to our recent uh, analysis on Boeing Airlines and also Tesla, these have been extremely profitable for us. We get to our targets and we say, look, we're going to close out of the trades and we are expecting, okay, we're expecting a candlestick uh, you know, to confirm our original suspicions of the end of that short term trend. In that particular instance for Tesla and Baidu, the trend breakout to the upside, we're sort of finishing the short term sentence. Well, the US dollar in this particular instance, this is going back to April uh, and also May 2016, we got to this conclusion that we were looking for one particular candles candlestick to change the sentence. And this was that candlestick. If I zoom on into the picture, this is what we call a hammer at support. And the reason I'm bringing this to your attention right now is because I strong, I mean, just going off a hunch, looking at literally thousands of charts, I assume that we are going to get a very similar candlestick on the US dollar when everyone is jumping in bearish on this. And it looks as though, again, we're breaking uh, support. And this support level is very, very important because if you go back in time and look at this support level, this has acted as both support and resistance since early 2015. It is very rare to see price action move, say for instance, from 100 on this particular um, ETF or the index itself down to 95 and not to at least short term move sideways. Okay, it'd be very rare to see this break down to $94 or $94.39, which is our secondary target on this uh, particular index. So what I'm trying to say for you on the US dollar is that look, as at the candle construction on Thursday, okay, it looks exceptionally, exceptionally bearish. However, Okay, and however, I mean this genuinely and as sincerely as I can possibly say this, I expect the US dollar to put in another type of hammer at support and to see this actually reverse very, very quickly back to the upside. The reason why I'm saying this is because um, generally when we look at gold and silver again, this is inversely correlated to the US dollar and the US dollar, just to show you this, it is exceptionally oversold. This is the daily time frame. What you want to be paying attention to is the RSI. It doesn't really give it justice, but we are also establishing what we call bullish divergence. See how price action is just priced in a lower low, whereas the MACD at the moment is really giving us divergence across that momentum isn't as low as what it was or as severe or as strong as we were at the beginning of June 2017. If I go out to the weekly chart also, this is where the picture again becomes very, very clear. When we get this naturally oversold okay and the last time i mean you can see this for yourself the stochastics is down here it's below uh that very negative number the rsi is printing almost down at 25 and the macd is uh in in bearish territory the last time we were down here was at that very same location going back to mid 2016 so i mean looking at as many charts as what i have and to become you know a little bit pronounced just speaking humbly as possible um, a lot of people will identify the us dollar as you know, an immediate sort of short term trade. And yes, you are somewhat correct. 
Uh, but again, with a little bit of wisdom, you can assume and a little bit of creativity anyway in the world of technical analysis, blending, I guess, the art and the science and coming to your own formal conclusions with experience that it would not surprise me, okay, to see this over the next coming or the next few trading sessions to see the beginnings of some white candlesticks show up and to see this reverse very, very quickly. I am going off on a little bit of a hunch here, but I think it is very much so well-founded at this particular time because when I bring up the charts of gold, you can see gold, it has bounced back up to the top of our red box. We were short at 119, we are short at 118, we've got a continuation entry at 117.78. We are identifying that we are at a pivot point, a turning point based off that weekly downward trend line dating back to 2011. And essentially for gold and silver to continue their bearish trends over time, and again, this isn't perfectly correlated whatsoever, but if in fact this bearish trend is going to continue, and this is the macro trend, well then we would assume the purchasing power of the US dollar over time, essentially from where it is priced at the moment, to start uh, appreciating in value if I guess our general hypotheses on gold, on silver and the intermarket relationship between these two commodities and the purchasing power of the US dollar is going to play out and continue to play out. However, if the US dollar does break down, if we see gold and silver catch a bit and start accelerating to the upside, get above 120, get above this declining bearish trend line and get above this swing high dating back to early June, well, then we will start to change our analysis. But really for, uh, you know, the discussion, really what I wanted to speak about in this particular video is look, pay attention, look for a clue, look for a reversal candlestick, look for an engulfing candlestick, a white candlestick, look for a one white soldier, look for a hammer at support with a long lower wick, because this is essentially uh, what you should be focusing on uh, when it comes to tradable opportunity and also whipsaw reversals for a lot of inexperienced and novice traders, again, who are identifying this simply of support and resistance and saying, hey, it's broken support. Yes, we're over, you know, over sold, but I'm still willing to sort of jump into this, even though, um, or, you know, just assuming anyway, that this is a fantastic trade setup. It's sort of sitting on a knife's edge at, at, knife's edge at the moment. Uh, I can read this. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me again just to see this reverse very, very quickly and uh, to see this really rally and strengthen very, very quickly. And it sort of fits our uh, assessment of gold and silver at this particular time. Uh, on top of that, <clears throat> I just pushed the wrong key. Let me just bring it up. I can also have a quick look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 pushing back up into resistance. Uh, what was it? Wednesday's candle was looking quite good. However, again, on uh, Thursday, although we haven't given back all of the gains, we are starting to see what appears to be some form of a tweezer top, although we haven't completely uh, established that two-day sort of tweezer top reversal pattern. We are at the top of this channel, which is interesting. We have been looking for the Russell and also the transportational average to validate some of the signals that we've seen with the industrial average and the S&P and the NASDAQ breaking out, uh, but most pertinently or, or importantly at the moment, the Dow and the S&P 500. But uh, the Russell 2000 in terms of market breadth, 2000 select individual companies, it looks as though resistance is being respected and it is going to take some additional time until we can crack above 1,437. Uh, also, if we extend this discussion into uh, the Dow Jones transportational averages where we're pushing back up into resistance, 9,555. We're still looking for the breakout ultimately on both of these markets. However, it's a, it's a question now whether or not it actually occurs in the month of July or if it sort of uh, is sort of pushed out into August 2017. And the answer to that question is going to be determined by, well, how far does the uh, industrial average, the S&P, retrace or, or correct? And if the NASDAQ is setting up some form of a channel consolidation sideways rather than just an essential or, or what we would assume to be, a pullback to the 50 where the trend is actually going to continue. Right now, we're asking ourselves the question, is this a trend? continuation sort of pull back immediately on the nasdaq because we've got two touches like this i assume it's going to be the later and the later of course being some form of a sideways channel consolidation to reset uh, a lot of these oscillators which are extremely overstretched and again the cci supports this it's, it has pushed down below that positive 100 reading on the dow it's also i mean it's holding just above it but it looks as though over the next coming sessions we are going to get that definitive close above that positive 100 reading and on the s p as well you can see this has closed below it on two occasions now we're printing just below 85 so it looks as though the short-term trend um, essentially has it has exhausted and you have to be prepared for the transitional shift that occurs in markets between that of a channel and also that of a trending market okay so i just wanted to make that very clear if you're interested in learning more have a look at pro over the weekend i will not be releasing a video on friday i will reserve that for people in that analysis class over the weekend all right so on that note everybody i wanted to wish you all well have an enjoyable weekend 
and I'll be back with you in due course. All the best, everyone. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. All the best. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.